tons of issues in terms of fast convergence and other limitations. Uh, so my recommendation is definitely avoid and try to use OSPF instead. OSPF. So OSPF is an industry standard protocol and it is a link state routing protocol. And basically the algorithm that it uses, let's kind of get back to the algorithm. So for OSPF it uses a metric and this metric that it uses is cost. And the cost is basically based on the bandwidth. So here's kind of a rule of thumb. Higher the bandwidth, lower the cost. And basically what we're doing is that from from one router to another router across multiple paths, it takes the total accumulative cost to determine which path to take. That's where the algorithm comes in. So the algorithm basically is called the shortest path first or Dijaskra. And um, basically it uses that algorithm to do this. It learns about the entire network. And basically it uses metrics, which is cost, which is based on bandwidth. And it goes through his algorithm and determining the best possible path based on the lowest accumulative cost to get to a particular destination. And it knows about a primary, it knows about backup, it learns about the entire network. So basically, that best possible route would then be injected into the global routing table. Updates. So OSPF does not, it sends updates only when there are changes. However, you see a little star there. Um, there are other updates that OSPF does, and we're not going to talk about it here because that's like another presentation by itself. But there are other updates that basically OSPF uses. Uh, for example, one of the components of OSPF is called an LSA. And basically these LSAs become expired and they kind of reflood all their LSA information. So there is other updates that OSPF does do behind the scenes. Routing tables. OSPF, um, unlike RIP or distance vector writing protocols, it has a neighbor table and has its own database table, which is what the algorithm, the SPF al algorithm, goes, goes through for calculating the best possible path. The administrative distance for OSPF is 110, and when to use OSPF, you will basically use this to provide enterprise routing when you have uh, multiple uh, multi-vendor hardware. Since OSPF is an industry standard routing protocol, if you have Juniper and Cisco equipment, it's definitely recommended to use OSPF for your routing protocol of choice. As we talked about briefly, there are a lot of components for OSPF that we're not going to cover, but some of those things include areas. There are different kind of router types, different kind of LSAs, and there's also um, details about stub routing, which is recommended for access or WAN, um, WAN WAN branch connections. But we'll be talking about those probably in a very different video slide. This is supposed to um, kind of um, serve as more of an overview of discussing some of these routing protocols. EIGRP. So EIGRP is a Cisco based routing protocol and its routing type it is a hybrid so basically it has classful and classless capabilities. The algorithm that it uses for determining the best possible path through its topology table is called dual. The metric that it uses is called a composite metric that, is, that consists of five components. Bandwidth, delay, load, MTU, and reliability. However, EIGRP is only using two of those metrics, bandwidth and the delay, and you times that by 256. And then that will give you your composite metric or your actual metric that EIGRP uses for um, determining the best possible path. And all of this is done using the algorithm that EIGRP uses, which is called dual. There are no really um, hop limits. In terms of updates, it sends updates when there are changes. So that's one enhancement over distance vector routing protocols. The routing table, just like OSPF, it contains also has a neighbor table and a topology table. For administrative distance, there's two of them. There's 90, which is for internal EIGRP routes within the same autonomous system. And there's also 170. 170 is for routes that are redistributed from another routing protocol like OSPF into EIGRP. EIGRP will flag those as an external EIGRP route and the admin distance is 170. When to use EIGRP? You will use this uh, for enterprise routing 
uh, when, if you have everything that it consists of Cisco hardware. I've been in environments that if everything is all Cisco, we go ahead and we use, we use the IGRP routing protocol. Um, the other components, there are other components just like OSPF for EIGRP. Some of those things include, there's some things about stub routing. EIGRP has things like queries that it uses for determining best possible route information. There are discussions about active and passive. And basically an active route, which is interesting, and a route that is active that EIGRP is using is called passive. And if a route goes active, that means it's looking for, well, how do I get to that network, the best possible information I can get? And that information basically is a successor, which you can view as a primary route. And then there's a feasible successor, which you can view as a secondary um, best path. BGP, we're gonna talk about this very quickly. So BGP is a path vector routing protocol in terms of metric, it uses a wide variety of attributes that can be like meds or metrics, weight, which is something more local to the router, local preference, which is anything within the autonomous system for BGP, or an AS path, which is basically choosing the lowest path to get to a particular destination. BGP does have its own BGP table that it does use with its own concepts of how to calculate some of those things using the, met the attributes. BGP does have two administrative distances, one for external BGP, which is 20, and one for internal BGP, which is 200. When do you use BGP? Um, you, you mainly will use it when you're dual homing with two ISPs, or if you're advertising basically a managed subnet to an ISP. And this is for people that have gotten their own subnet, their own IP subnets from a clearinghouse like Aaron. And basically with that, uh, most providers will not route that for you. Some will, you have to get those details, but they will route, but basically requires that you route your network using your BGP ASN number out to the ISPs, hence out to, out to the internet. So hardware, so there are, are a, um, a lot of routers that, are, that can be used for your environment. And a lot of them contain the same kind of features and capabilities. Some of them are kind of considered kind of the business size model and other kind of feature and technical requirements. Now the Cisco ISR is kind of recommended on Cisco's site if you notice for more like for, um, for WAN branch offices for the most cases. But you can use it for your, um, for your internet edge location. You can use it for your WAN aggregation. I worked uh, one of our um, Customers, which is a large business, about 10,000 plus people, we use a 3800 series router for the WAN aggregation side. So basically, it all comes down to not just the feature requirements, but also some of the other technical requirements and port capacity. And that's what makes um, the difference between these different models. The Cisco ISR 800 is really something that, like, is like a turnkey solution that has um, switch ports on it, and it can allow us to do routing and switching, security capabilities like firewalls, VPNs, and also with wireless connectivity. But this is uh, more aimed for teleworkers, Shoho, or small businesses. Next is the 1800 series, and this is recommended.